Next up is uh, Benoit Chenou. Yeah. He's did I correct, pronounce yeah. that correctly? Okay. Um, he is uh, best known for being the author of uh, G Unicorn, but today he's going to talk about uh, how he ported the Go concurrency model to Python. So please give a warm round of applause to Benoit. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, so I'm pleased to meet you uh, and to be there today. I will um, present you my little journey in concurrent programming with Python and how I uh, finished by experimenting uh, to port the Go concurrency model in Python and uh, the library I wrote for that. So just to quickly to introduce myself, I'm the J. Nicole author a Whisky web server in Python. I'm also CouchDB core committer and member of the PMC, which is the project management group of the CouchDB. I'm a Python Foundation fellow member, and I'm doing open source for a living. So uh, first, what is concurrent programming? Uh, basically, concurrent programming is a way to run function uh, simultaneously, uh, but it doesn't mean uh, uh, formally in parallel. It doesn't have to be in parallel. It could be just running multiple your function execute code uh, simultaneously uh, by uh, uh, sharing uh, your process in multiple time slices on which you will run uh, from time to time a part of the code you want to execute. Or you can run it on uh, multiple CPUs or machines and uh, then it can be run in parallel in that case. Uh, you have mostly two models of um, concurrency. Uh, the first one is the chair and memory. Uh, which is easier for the programmer. Uh, he doesn't have to care about uh, variable. He can use global variable, uh, variable are passed to functions, and the uh, uh, virtual machine, the runtime is managing it for him. Uh, it has, it can be uh, problematic. It can, if this is not a more efficient way to run, to run your program concurrently, because uh, you, um, the runtime have to care about logs, uh, and when you want to access, for example, to a global variable, uh, you will, the system will have to, to ask for the latest step of the variable, and then you will have to lock to so runtime, check the variable, and pass it to the function, etc. again, and back and forth. And uh, Python is not really efficient for that. And the other way is message passing. So you have two models. You have uh, the actor model and the CSP model. I won't detail it. Sam, uh, today this is mostly a way to say uh, my function, my code is running uh, independently um, uh, in, uh, in a part of my process or on the diff different process on different machine, and I'm passing to them uh, data via message passings uh, so uh, they can discuss uh, between themselves and exchange and data. Um, Erlang and Scala are very well known to, uh, to handle them. So, um, uh, nowadays in Python, uh, you have a uh, different way to handle that. Uh, you have three ways in the standard library. The old way, for example, is using asynco, which is basically just an improved select. Uh, uh, select allows you to um, wait on read and, ev and write events on your circuits or file descriptors. Uh, async allows you that to do that, but you can register a function that will handle uh, some code uh, when an event happened. Uh, you have a, a more primitive way, which are threads in Python. Uh, I will come back later on that, uh, but you have many problems with thread in, in Python. They allows you to run concurrently, but uh, doesn't run in parallel, and, uh, and uh, are running consequent, uh, serially. You have multiprocessing that allows you to launch uh, code on different OS, OS processes, and that have the same API as threads. And on top of them, you can use a future, which um, are now in Python 3, uh, but are available as an extension in Python 2, and that allows you to execute code uh, using a thread of pool or thread of process on top of multiprocessing on threads, and uh, you, you can execute your code on one thread or one process, and the result, when you come back later in the future, uh, you, you recover the result of the exceptions uh, you had. And you can also put some callback on that, on the result. You have AsyncEO, which is a modern way in Python 3, uh, which is all, allows you to do evented and asynchronous programming. Uh, it um, basically allows you to yell to or yell from a generator. And uh, um, not really like AsyncEO because it, 
it's like you you were you are doing message passing with, uh, because you can send to uh, to an iterator or getting back some result from an iterator, but this is not message passing and this is only running on one frame in your thread. Uh, so uh, it just interrupts your code uh, the time you get uh, the data from a, from an iterator or to an iterator, and then you come back on the code. So you you can't really run multiple uh, code in the main concurrently. You just interrupt from time to time the code. And it's also running on one frame only. Uh, you can also use external library. Um, uh, you have too many groups of external library. The, the one that are implicitly yielding and running asynchronous code, uh, blocking code in background. You don't have to care about how it's render code. Um, it's hidden. You are uh, um, using your, you are developing your Python code like you are usually do. Uh, each function are blockings. You uh, pass a function, get the result, etc., etc., and the code is run in an event loop. Uh, G event, eventlet, evergreen are good library for that, and they are all based on um, greenlets. Uh, they just are using different event loops. For G event, this is a lib event today, and uh, evergreen is using by uh, lib uv and by uv. Uh, the other group is the event library twisted, uh, like twisted, uh, which is uh, uh, mostly working like uh, async you, at least uh, it inspired a lot of async you. And this is, um, um, for me, this is like having no GS somehow on Python, uh, using your uh, spaghetti code and waiting for callback, passing for callback, uh, eventually deferring some call uh, for later, but uh, this is not what I really wanted. And all these library, async or async you, uh, event, event let evergreens, twisted, uh, all are based of event loops, mostly targeting IO, uh, input output. So files, uh, events and, and sockets events, uh, with some options to, uh, to, to, to use the time where your event loop is yielding, uh, to handle some other code or, uh, to, to handle a timer. So I decided to, uh, I write a new library uh, for that so to experiment some new code uh, and basically put in the Go uh, runtime library, uh, the Go runtime uh, to Python. Uh, offset uh, means if this is a small and virtual complete dot of plants, uh, so that is growing on another plant and are sharing the same at the end. They are both sharing the same at the end, but the other plant uh, have its own life. And this is basically what is offset. This is um, uh, making uh, the Go uh, scheduling scheduler on top of Python on the top of the Python VM. Uh, I have some goals or sort of. Uh, I want a simple blocking API uh, like Gevent and Eventlet, but um, that is not trying to patch uh, in, in in background uh, my uh, the standard library. I prefer something explicit. I prefer to see to know when my library is is uh, patched and I prefer to proxy uh, uh, standard library for that. Based on the concurrency model, so uh, it used to be uh, working on Python 2.7 and it's still working on Python 2.7 and 2.8, 2.7.8, uh, but I'm mostly focusing today on Python 3.4 and PyPy uh, because I don't have time to, to handle all the Python today. And you can find it on my uh, repository. Uh, the co concurrency model uh, uh, is mostly a memory model. Uh, it's based on Go routine. Each Go routine are a bunch of code that is uh, running on one thread. Uh, it's basically a, a way to uh, to split your thread in, uh, in, a, in a, to to pass function execution code in a stack of your threads uh, in multi-frame. And uh, when you want to switch from uh, one code to the other, uh, the system is choosing one frame in the thread. Uh, to, to execute and, and, and go back uh, in your code, etc. And it's basically just adding a metadata to your threads. Uh, each code team doesn't know uh, from each other. They are running independently from other. You can't pass a uh, global variable. Obviously, in Go, you have global variable, but it's uh, uh, not advised to use them. And this is the same in offset. You can use because you are in Python, but uh, I don't advise you to use them because you will have, uh, again, concurrency issue. Uh, they don't share anything, and channel pipes are the only way to communicate between them. Uh, also, are a way to unblock your code because when you are waiting for a channel, uh, the scheduler is able to run again uh, to say if someone I will send to the channel or to execute another code, etc. 
and you can wait on multiple channels. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, uh, I decided to code that on top of Python because it was easier, but yeah, it was uh, some, I have some nightmares, so really, uh, I didn't sleep some time uh, to find a way. <laughs> uh, so, uh, because Python has drawback, and the main drawback is well known, this is the guild, and the main problem of the guild, uh, the guild is here uh, to um, allow you to, uh, to, to make easy code to have global variable to easily pass variable to your function. But like I said, to do that, the system is, uh, the runtime is, uh, is need to lock, and it takes times. And also, because of that, one of the OS thread uh, is executed at time. Uh, you, you may have multiple threads running in parallel in your systems, but you can only handle one thread at a time to execute the code, and then you need to wait at the thread finish to execute. To, to get the results. So during this time, your system is locked. Um, but it works well for IO boons, uh, things like uh, accepting one socket, waiting for a connection, reading an event on, uh, reading an event on sockets, or reading a file, writing to a file, because all of that is handled in, background, in the background by your OS. So using Thread for that, and I will use for that, is very fine. And yeah, Python has no implementation of the current thing, and I don't want to try to, to do that on Yield. Um, I don't think it will work anyway. So um, I decided to, uh, to, to create some coroutines, uh, to create a coroutine system. Uh, coroutine will always be executed in the same thread, in the main thread, and broken call operations will be executed in their own thread, a Python thread. Uh, to, uh, to uh, implement coroutine, I'm using Python Fiber. Uh, Python Fiber is uh, basically a port of continuous on C Pythons from Sagul, theater of IUV. And uh, I uh, contributed to Python Fiber to also uh, have the same API to, on top of uh, PyPy. So you can use Python Fiber on top of PyPy to using the same API. Um, I created a module to um, do atomic locking, so instead of using uh, mutex, uh, et cetera, on the system, I'm using uh, atomic operations that you can find on GCC and other implementations, and I've created a CFFI for that. Everything uh, is abstracted in PROS class, so if you want to use greenlets, uh, you can eventually write your own uh, abstraction to, to build coroutines. So scheduling, so this is the main part of the offset uh, library. Uh, there are three entities in the scheduler. The other threads call F because they will run in futures, in thread pools. Uh, scheduler context, which is called P because you have one scheduler context, uh, which we maintain in run two, uh, in the main thread. And this is called P because of process. And this is, uh, process uh, your Python VM. And go routine, which are called T. Uh, so, uh, how the scheduler work is pretty simple, in fact, at the end. Uh, you have a process uh, context which is maintaining a, a run queue, a run queue of coroutines, and these coroutines uh, are stacked in a queue, and the first one entered will be the first to be out, to be executed. At a time, you have only one coroutine that is running, uh, this, the one that is put out of the run queue, and when the coroutine has stopped to run, um, it can be placed, uh, put back in the run queue, or it can be uh, another uh, go routing from the run queue will be executed. Of course, uh, you still have a syscall, a system call to handle uh, any blocking call, like uh, waiting, uh, having a timer, or waiting for a connection, or, or reading a file, uh, any blocking operation, mostly I/O operations. So you have still your run queue, uh, and when you go routing is detected as, as uh, blocking, and this is done by patching, uh, proxying the standard library in the syscall modules uh, in offsets. I'm, uh, um, I'm uh, adding, uh, I'm tagging any uh, blocking call in from the standard library in the syscall modules. And when um, a function is detected as uh, blocking, uh, the scheduler will put uh, the go routing out of the, of the runtime, out of the run queue, and will create a call uh, in the thread pools that will uh, handle the call. So uh, the, the call, uh, accepting connection or reading a file, will be handled in thread. And when it comes back, uh, the scheduler uh, recreate the go routing and put it back in the run queue. And it, it put it back in the, on top of the run queue, so it will be executed in priority. 
and, uh, and you will get the results in your code later. So by doing that, um, all, all, all your size code are able to run in parallel and you are still able to handle the rest of the code uh, in your runtime. Uh, some examples. Uh, here uh, is a go, uh, is a go routine example. So on the right, you have the Python code. On the left, you have the Go code, which are pretty similar. So uh, what this code is doing is pretty simple. It's putting hello world uh, five times. And uh, the first time the main function is, is executed. So here you are seeing uh, some kind of old code because the run function is about to be removed. I just need to commit the code. Uh, but uh, right now, this is how it works. So uh, you have a goroutine uh, that is uh, saying words, and uh, and the main function that is saying hello. And the say function, what it's doing is five time is printing the uh, the um, uh, the string that is passed to it, and uh, is sleeping during uh, 100 milliseconds. And when it's sleeping, this is um, a syscall function. And when it's sleeping. Uh, the go routing is put um, back in the run queue, and the next code will be executed. So the first time is, it would say hello, uh, ma the main function will be put out uh, of, um, will be put back in the run queue, and the next go routing, which is a, a world go routing, the first go routing will print hello, will be put in the run queue, then uh, the next go routing will be executed, will say hello, etc., etc., five times. And uh, yeah, uh, pretty similar to the Go code uh, uh, module of the syntax. Um, channels, so channels are fully implemented in offsets, like in Go, uh, you have all the features you have in Go language, uh, you have uh, them in offsets. Uh, channels are mostly pipes that connect concurrent Go routing. You can send value in a, uh, in channel, into a channel from one Go routing to the other, and receive uh, those value uh, in another Go routines. And, by doing that, uh, when you are sending a value, uh, the go routing is put back in the run queue to let the chance to another queue, uh, to, an, uh, to let uh, the chance to go routing to send back the data to this go routing. When the data, uh, when the go routing is sending, it will put back in the run queue and the next go routing will be, uh, will be available. Okay. And, uh, and uh, you will be able to read. So by doing that, we are mostly articulating the scheduler and unblocking your code by passing the message uh, from one go routing to the other go routing. Channel can be preferred, that uh, means that you have to, don't have to wait that someone is receiving the first value you are sending, you can s send many value at a time, uh, so they, uh, before blocking your code. And you can select on multiple channels. Here is a simple example. Uh, on the right you have Python, on the right and the left you have Go again, and we are making a channel. Uh, here the goal is to uh, sum a uh, list, and uh, to sum the, the list uh, more efficiently, we will split in two, and we are splitting the list in two, we're creating two go routing that will sum this list. To this go routing, we are passing a channel which is created by the make chan function. And uh, when the sum is done in the go routing, it will send back the result in the channel. And the main go routine, the main go routine, the main function is waiting for the result of these two go routings getting the result of the sum on X and, uh, X and Y. And uh, we sum the final result to print the final sum. And the code in Go is quite similar. Uh, this is an example of um, buffering. And uh, this is an example with the channel. Uh, so the channel is uh, 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 the select function, which allows you to wait on multiple channel, and you can wait that someone is able to receive the data you want to send to him, or uh, to wait uh, that someone is able to send you some data that you want to receive. And mostly like a select uh, when you are waiting for read and write in your circuits. And uh, this is done by the if send functions here, uh, and you register some, um, uh, some events in the select function. So you are, uh, here we are uh, receiving a send and a resend, a receive, sorry. And voila, uh, this is the Fibonacci function, I have not time to detail it. Uh, you have other models implemented, you have sync function which are atomic locking uh, that you can uh, use in your uh, library uh, uh, in plus uh, of channels so you can uh, do uh, some uh, atomic locking. And you have timer and net and IO modules to uh, to handle uh, IO connection to your file and uh, and your sockets uh, in an unblocking manner. 
What I want to do is to rewrite channel using a map. Uh, this is mostly done. Uh, span on different process of machine, uh, which uh, needs the first one to be done. No channel and make the runtime switchable, like in Rust, so you can eventually uh, switch to a library runtime if you want, or to use a multiprocessing runtime uh, or any other runtime. Any help is appreciated, and you can also uh, contribute to the repository. Voilà. If you have some questions, and yeah, if you have. If you have questions, please line up at the microphones or raise your hand if you're... Okay. No? No questions yet? Okay. Okay. Thanks again, Thank Benoit.